Um, so my name is Connor Phelan, and just this past January, um, I studied abroad for one month um, on our interim term with a St. Olaf program um, that was a religion trip, and we went to the countries of Greece and Turkey, and we studied sacred places in both of those countries. So let me tell you about my experience there. Um, so where did we go? We started off in Greece. We arrived in Athens, um, right in the capital, and then we basically drove all over. We didn't spend any more than three days in a single city, um, so we were constantly going. We never fully got to like unpack our suitcases. Um, we went to Athens, um, Kabbalah, Thessaloniki. Um, we went down to Nakio on the peninsula. It was gorgeous. Um, we happened to be in Athens on the day. It was 54 degrees in Athens. And in Minnesota, it was a windshield of negative 50 degrees. Um, I missed the worst, but it was great. Um, we then, so we spent two weeks in Greece, and then we spent two weeks in Turkey. Um, so after we crossed the border over to Turkey, um, we started off on the west coast in um, a city called um, Kanakale, and we spent a the night there, and then continued down into Izmir, actually spent six days there, um, over into Konya, which is kind of in the middle, um, up to Ankara, and then flew over to Istanbul, and ended our trip in Istanbul. So, um, before we left for this trip, we were um, instructed on how to enter a space, because we were going to be entering other people's sacred spaces. Um, they were contemporary religious sites, they were historical ruins, um, all kinds of sites, um, and they weren't necessarily places that were sacred to us, but we needed to be respectful of other people's spaces. So we discussed how to enter a space. Um, we were taught that you should know your goal, um, that you should be able to center yourself and really be able to be present in that space. Um, you're also able to ask, what can the space offer you? You need to think about being immersed versus being a seeker which I'll also talk about a little bit later, um, being a pilgrim versus being a tourist there and how those two are very opposite of each other. That there's a lot of sensory involvement from all, of, all five senses. They don't all have to play a role at the same time, um, but you're not just seeing, there are a lot of sights, there are a lot of sounds. Um, and also the danger of anticipation. Um, we were really warned from our professor that you know we were going to some really great places. Um, a lot of us were looking forward to going to the Acropolis in Athens, but don't get yourself all hyped up and then be really disappointed when it doesn't meet your expectations. So just go with a completely open mind. So the importance of language. Um, this picture was actually taken at one of our hotels in Turkey. Um, you can see that it was poorly translated from Turkish. Um, my favorite line would probably be, um, please do not enter the pool, inflatable boat, and the sea was deep enough. So <laughs> language is really important. Um, we were taught pretty basic phrases before we left because we were told by um, our professor that you will gain a lot of respect from the people there if you just know basic phrases, especially how to say please and thank you and hello and goodbye. Um, you don't have to be someone who's from there, um, but if you can really just immerse yourself in the culture, um, you get a lot of respect if you're just able to say thank you and not in English. Um, so it's important because the first thing that I said to our Greek bus driver on the day that we met him was yamas, which I thought very foolishly was a greeting like hello. Um, it actually is said when you're drinking and you want to cheers to something. Um, I was laughed at and I moved on. Um, it's important, right? So you don't want to make a fool of yourself. It's okay to make mistakes, obviously, but I basically was cheering him and I had just met the guy and he was like, this girl. Um, so it's very important. Um, so how do we fit in with clothing? When we were in Greece, and mostly in Turkey too, um, you dress just like you would dress here. Um, the temperatures were, you know, in the 40s and 50s, so we mostly wore pants and a short sleeve shirt. Um, but it was, you know, in Greece you see all kinds of dressing styles, just like you'd see here. Um, in Turkey it was a little bit more modest. It's a country that is over 90% Muslim, um, even though it is still considered a secular state. Um, but when we did ent enter places like mosques, um, the women were asked to wear long skirts and headscarves. Um, the men, as long as they were wearing pants, they were fine. They didn't need any kind of other covering. Um, but they were very different depending on where we were. And for the most part, clothing was not an issue because you just dress modestly when you go abroad. Um, but it was definitely, you know, I had never worn a headscarf before. Um, so when we go into these places of worship, um, you had to respect other people's rules and beliefs. Um, so how did we fit in with beliefs? Um, on our third day in Athens, it was Epiphany, um, which is better or bigger than Christmas. Um, it's huge. Um, so we went to the Epiphany service in Athens, and then in Konya, um, we saw well, we saw mosques all over Turkey. Um, but that is a mosque. Um, you know, there are different beliefs from ours. In Greece, it's primarily Greek Orthodoxy, and in Turkey, like I said, it's over 90% Muslim. Um, secular state. 
states, but religion plays a huge role in both. So, some of the major cultural differences. Um, in Greece, the meal times are very different. You start lunch at about 2 p.m., you start dinner about 8 p.m. Um, it's a very slow, relaxed pace of life, which is great. Um, they are really trying to progress. They're trying to put a subway system in right now. Um, the issue is that they keep digging and they keep running into ruins and they can't go anywhere. Um, they're very hopeful people. They had the economic recession, but they've bounced back. They're very resilient. Um, everything revolves around food and family there. Um, we consistently ate gyros. I could eat them for the rest of my life. I love them. Um, food was a huge deal there. Meals took hours. Um, it was just really, really fun. Um, in Turkey, the difference is Izmir is one of the big cities that we went to. Um, it's Turkey's most liberal and secular city. You can go a whole day without seeing um, a single headscarf or hearing the minaret for called prayer. Um, they have very different views on women, and um, you will see a lot of headscarves and skirts, um, especially in the mosque, but not necessarily out and about. Um, and then in Istanbul, it's literally where East meets West. Half of the city is on the European continent, half of the city is on the Asian continent. Um, we were able to cross both in one day. It was really cool. We just You take a boat back and forth. Um, the evil eye is a very um, present symbol. Um, it kind of wards off um, any evil powers. Um, so it's very different, very cool culture. So to go as a pilgrim versus tourist, which is what we talked about in our class, um, you don't have to be a worshiper, but sometimes you are. Um, a pilgrim feels drawn to preserve a place. They want to keep it for... Um, a personal connection, and they also have a human encounter um, with a transcendent power. It doesn't have to be religious, but it certainly can be. And as a tourist, you're drawn because it's a place of wonder to you. It's a very grand, grand place that you want to see. Um, and these communities live very separately from each other. Um, and then ordinary versus sacred place. Um, I won't go over everything, but ordinary, you know, would be like a space you and I are in now. And a sacred place could be a place of retreat. It could be where someone goes to seek answers. They find peace within themselves. Um, and both places can be any of these, all of these, one of these, none of these. Um, Belden Lane was a um, philosopher that we studied, and he came up with these um, four axioms that were a big part of our study and what we based a lot of our readings off of and teachings. And my sacred places to finish up was Pamukkale in Turkey. Um, it's, a, it's a natural wonder of the world. Um, these are actually calcium deposits from the water, and you can walk in them. They're hot springs. They're gorgeous. We spent the afternoon there. Very relaxing. And Nefshahir, Turkey, um, also a natural wonder of the world. Um, these places were carved out by people on top, and these are um, just naturally carved by the wind there. And you can just climb forever, and it's gorgeous. Um, it's a natural site. It's been untouched by humans, except for where they've carved in to live. Um, and it is just gorgeous, and you can just lose yourself there. Um, so these are some things that you guys can think about as you go about how do you approach a sacred space, how does a person make a place sacred, do we have a responsibility to a sacred place, and does that place have a responsibility to us in return? So, thank you very much.